Welcome back. We've been looking at these Zossi cameras that pair through to these Zossi MVRs. So they're CCTV cameras that connect through to these MVRs. We discovered that the cameras use a fixed Wi-Fi password, a PSK of 12345678. And we found that the MVR creates a network with an SSID that looks like its serial number. So the cameras that came with it, they come in a box, four of them with the MVR, somehow know to pair with this MVR. Now is that something that they left the factory with or is it some kind of pairing process that happens after it's left the factory? I'm not sure how it works at the moment. And as you can see, the MVR is powered off. This is the camera we've been looking at previously. Again, it's powered off, we're gonna get rid of it. This camera here, however, has never ever been powered on whilst it's been in my possession with the MVR. So if this already knows what the SSID of the MVR is, it was paired in the factory. If it doesn't, then there's some kind of handshake process that occurs. So we've got the setup we had before. So what we have here is a USB Ethernet adapter. We've got it connected via wired Ethernet and we've got the power supply there. Now today, we're gonna to be using Windows. You'll see why in the next part of the series, why we're using Windows. Now the first things first, if I'm installing shady software that is unsigned from dodgy sources, I don't want to do it on my own machine, so I use a virtual machine. What Microsoft do is they allow you to download virtual machines for various versions of Windows. So we've got here Windows 7, Windows 8 and Windows 10 with various versions of Internet Explorer. It's actually designed to be used to test websites against legacy browsers. But this is really helpful for us as a reverse engineer. We can download a, a virtual machine ready to go for VirtualBox, VMware or Parallels, ready to go. It's only licensed for 90 days or something that you need to go back to a snapshot. But to be honest, we don't care. You're gonna be using it for 30 days with, to work something and go back to the beginning. Another tool that I think is really helpful is Ninite. What Ninite is, is a tool um, that allows you to choose which programs you want to install, Chrome, Firefox, Notepad++, 7-Zip, VLC, and so on. You tick the boxes, and then down at the bottom you press get your Ninite, and it downloads one executable that will install all of this software. It just makes it so much easier to get a VM up and running with all of that software in it. A bit annoyingly, it doesn't have Wireshark in it, but you know, you can't have everything. So we're gonna jump through to our Windows Virtual Machine. The USB Ethernet adapter has been passed through to it, and we're now gonna power up the camera. So the camera is going to come on. Now you remember the other one was on 192.168.138.2. That was the, the IP address on that wired interface. I've set my Windows machine to be 192.168.138.123. Uh, so you can see Windows is really chatty. It spews out a hell of a lot of stuff. Now, very, very quickly there, let me stop the auto scrolling. Who has 192.168.147.1? Tell 192.168.147.5. Who has 192.168.138.254? Tell 192.168.138.5. So it looks like it's maybe a little bit confused about what IP address it's got. So we've got the 147.5, which I believe was the Wi-Fi interface and 138.5, which I believe was the, that's strange, okay. It's .5, uh, so let's try Telnet 192.168.138.5. Okay, so the wired interface is listening on 138.5. now. This is interesting, someone pointed out in a comment on one of the previous videos that the password, the root password had been cracked for these. So username root and the password is 123456ASJ and we're in. So now we can run if config. And there you can see, yeah, we've got F0, the wired interface on 192.168.138.5, which is that IP address there. WLAN 0, the Wi-Fi doesn't have an IP address. It didn't come up before unless you unplugged the Ethernet. It's a bit strange that that was coming out there. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. So we're now telnetted into the device with a, a hard-coded root password that's common across all of them.
So where do we go from here? Well, one of the first things that we noticed was if you go into ETC, it had the, the two files, hostapd.conf and wpa-psk.conf or something like that. Yeah. So wpa-psk.conf was the file that was used to connect to the MVR. So you can see we've got that PSK of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we've got the SSID of MVR, 82XJ, M1, YZ, 8FE, KN, so, yep, okay. That is exactly the same. That is the serial number of the MVR. So this camera that has never been powered on whilst it's been in my possession already knows the SSID of that camera. So they've been paired in the factory, or paired before I got them, anyway. It's quite a complex process, that, pairing cameras with a, an MVR. Like, if you're using public key crypto or something like that with a, an authority, then they could all communicate automatically with each other. But they, it already knows what that SSID is. So I wonder how they're doing that. I wonder if we can factory reset and work out what's going on there. Again, if we run PS, yeah, we can see that it's not running WPA supplicant. It's not trying to connect to that network. That's probably because we have the Ethernet connected. So we've learned a little bit more here that the cameras are already prepared to the MVR. We know what that root password is that's common across all of them. So I think what I really need to explore now is what else we can do with this. Now, there's a, there's a reason that I've gone with Windows here. And in the next part, we're going to explore using one of Zossi's tools to try and communicate with this camera over the, over the Ethernet network. They say it's to update the firmware, but I reckon it might be able to do a lot more. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, press like, subscribe, press the notification bell, and I will be back in a few days. Thank you.